Wait, did we do Slipknot already? One? Oh, no. Stump and I did not long ago because when Stump comes in here, I think he tends to be more engaged with the throwbacky stuff. I've noticed that. Yeah, like yeah. he like I, I and, and I love that and I love when he like goes down that lane. It's like he's he gets the most out of this when it like brings back some memories yeah. and you know things Reminisce. reminiscing nostalgic from when he was younger. So we did Slipknot Duality which I admitted openly that I thought that was the pinnacle of Slipknot. It's like listen that's the pinnacle for me. I mean, I know they're still making music and there was a lot of music after that. But for me, it's kind of honestly been like a downhill from there. Okay. So Subliminal Verse is the epitome. Everything was downhill from there. Having said that, this album, which I didn't put the album, but I think the album was called All Hope Is Gone. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. You know, you're right. We think. Yep. I I really had hope when this album came out because I was like, holy cow, this feels good. Like I I had come to terms that it wasn't as good as Subliminal Verses. Yeah, I was never gonna break that ceiling. But again. I was like, this is a pretty good indicator that they're gonna keep on that track and doing it and doing it how I like. And after this, it was like mm. yeah. So for me, this was kind of like I still listen to Slipknot, I'll check out new albums. But I believe this album and this song specifically was kind of where... Your swan song. The story yeah. ended. So talk to me about your relationship and affair with Slipknot, either high level or more granular. Um, they were... I more got into them through just osmosis and being around yep. it, you know, growing up with you, my dad. And they were always one of those bands that, like... I either loved the song or I hated it, and there was no in between. Which, that's understandable, dude. Absolutely. I get that. And especially knowing me, my palate, like, they're softer, more melodic ones I'm going to love. The harder stuff I'm not going to. But when I was maybe nine years old, you showed me this video on our desktop computer. <laughs> Wait, I did? In our living room. This, and it was through the glass, Stone Sour, <laughs> too, did. one night. And oh, I did you right, bro. Dude, this <laughs> latched into my brain like a leech throughout... From, it, since then, I've gone back to it at least once or twice a year. There's something about just the whole, and we'll get into it, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. One of my favorite, favorite all time I, tracks. I love that you got into it, even if it's only like an osmosis thing and just with tracks here and there. And you were at that Slipknot show yeah. at the Meadows. 2018. 17. And it was ridiculously insane, <sighs> right? Crazy. And they th put on a stage performance like I've never in my life experienced. And it. that's what I was so happy about because I was like, Chewie's here and he's going to see what they're doing on stage and he's going to get it. Yeah. Like, oh, he's God, gonna did get I get it. <laughs> he's going to get it right away. So uh, August 22nd, 2008, Slipknot Dead Memories. I would also like to call out that I think... From a video matching with the song standpoint, this might be in my top 10 of all Easy. time. This inspired my Halloween costume in fifth grade where I was Mick, number Wait, seven. You decided to be Mick? I decided to be Mick from this video. I had it written on my arm and everything. It was a uh, whole thing. Did you wear like Oh, uh, yeah. We got, a, we got a mask. No. There was a mask. I still have it somewhere. I went out one year as uh, Chris Fenn. I remember well, that. With the nose, right? <laughs> the nose. I remember that. All right. So let's check out this video if you haven't seen it. It's going to be amazing. If you're a fan of Slipknot, this should bring back some good Suck. memories. This is... I think that's Corey without Young makeup. Corey, yeah. yeah. Very young, yeah. With the sh <laughs> I feel like I'm nine years old again. So young, this. dude! What's he doing? What's Corey going to do? No! Oh, no. Not the headlight! Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> this screams Des Moines. I mean, that's got to be in Des Moines, dude. I was just <laughs> thinking that. This screams Des Moines. This yeah. is home turf for Corey. And I love that this song, he's doing a lot of the clean vocals. Yes. So I'm a that's big, why I loved it so much. I'm a big that's fan of thing. clean Corey. Yeah. Dirty Corey's fine, but. That's why I love Stone Sour so much. Yep. So he's, he's in the scene. Sid room. Yeah. So he's with Going Sid. one through 
one room for each yeah. band member. And the Sid room to kick it off is a little unsettled. That and uh, Joey Jordan's is room, too. Harrowing when I was a <laughs> prepubescent little lad. <laughs> All right, whose room's he in now? Yeah, that's and right it, yep. See, they should have ended with those two because they're creepy. so creepy. Oh, I don't like the hands. Now, too. All the I like that. Of course, he was getting lady stuff. Yeah, also R.I.P. Joey Jordan. I know, dude. Horrible. I mean, just a perfect example of... Oh, wait, Chris Fenn. Yeah. Oh, no, not Chris Fenn. No. Spiky Head, I forget his name. See, this would have been a good one to open with. Yes. Because it's creepy, but it's... Yeah. I can handle it. Eases it eases you in. Not look at branch hands, right? <laughs> Double bass, lots of percussion. Incredible. Who's next? Who's next? Jim Root? Oh no, that's Paul Gray. He's Paul Gray. also dead. Yeah, another RIP. Big dude. This whole video is so unsettling. It's 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 a really good example of how Slipknot gets you out of your comfort zone. Yes, you know what it I mean. Me at extremely. Yeah, that's what they want to do. It does it well? They, yeah. Yep. Clowny room. I want to go into the clowny room. Yeah. I know he's got a jump ball back. Clowny room's fun. I want to do this one. Chicks, a bat. So much fun. Get a mask with a whistle, with a ball. Got it all. Clowny room's got it all. Incredible, dude. Here it is. I couldn't believe what a sheer unit this guy was. Let me tell you something. I've stood next to him for pictures. Oh, dude. Had and he, like, his head to touch Scotty. <laughs> the guy is a monster. Crazy. I mean, that's... Like, Corey's maybe a little shorter than me, but yeah. when he hit him... Corey's head is at his chest Crazy. level. Crazy. The guy's a giant. Oh, whose room are we going into now, Chewie? I forget. I think there's only two left. Oh, Jim. We haven't seen... Oh, there he is. Jim Root. Okay. Jim Root's room. And his room looks fun, A lot too. of these rooms, they're hit or miss. They're all or nothing. I mean, it's either creeping me out or making me want to go in there. Either way. Let's go. I'll roll the dice, sir. Oh, yeah, there's Chris there This one's a little creepy too. Chris Fenn not dead, but also not in the band. Right? That's yeah. what I thought. Jesus Christ. Nick was the guitarist, right? One of them. Nick Nick is the big tall guitarist. Yeah, yeah. one of the guitarists. Wow. I, oh, that boy, was I'm sure glad. I'm sure glad you decided to do that. Right? What a Incredible. journey. Dude, it holds up. It, Unbelievably ab- well. That was released, what, 14 years ago? Absolutely yeah. holds up. Hasn't missed a note. I, again, I think that's a perfect example of Slipknot. Probably not at their best, like, in the high-level sense of, like, very, like, loud guitars and a yeah. lot of screaming. But as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty close to Slipknot at their best like across the board because it's everything's hitting. They're hitting, dude. It's and like that was probably one of the last <laughs> times the OG lineup with it, Paul Gray. It was and, the last right? time. Yeah. It was the last time Gray chapter and all that. Yep. I, I, again, I'm not huge on where Slipknot is at now. I, you know, I love that they're still trying to do it. I love that they're charging three hundred dollars for a VIP pass when you don't even get to meet the band. Listen, they got all a, those things are okay. They got four hundred one k's. They got about all some. Those things are okay. It, it's like I know you didn't live through it, but you've seen it for sure. They're starting to get into the realm of like Kiss, like not to that extreme, yeah. but where they're like, listen, we're getting older. Gotta pay the bills. But we gotta pay the bills and we still have some, you know, there's people. They pe- want to be creative still, I'm sure. And like, there's people that are shit. gonna go see Slipknot even if they're 80 years old. 120%. Right? But if the flip side of that is that 
there's a huge vast catalog of Slipknot so music that for. I love and I'm appreciative for. I'm not sure I would ever go see them again. Would you? I, Have you had enough? Especially for me, that was a one and done. I was. <laughs> I got to see it, appreciate it, and I I don't there were so many Marilyn Manson eye contacts in yeah, that crowd. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot and the crowd is a lot. I I I I've talked to Swunk about it and I think if it was like a perfect night, like it was a Saturday night and they came with like, you know, three or four really strong That's, opening yeah. acts, I'd think about it just for the nostalgia thing. But if you haven't seen Slipknot Live, even if you've been kind of an adjacent fan like chewy said so worth greatest live show yeah. of all time i think yeah. unbelievable so again maybe they don't need you to go see him maybe they don't need you to click their link but the links are there if you want they're to there. they're there fondle them a let's bit. go and then smash like and subscribe bam <laughs>